Hello guys and welcome to a new Steel Division video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you game one in a best of three between Walther and Player in the quarterfinals of Herobert's Grand Tournament. Today we are seeing Colin Bell and on the allied side Walther is using the second infantry. On the Axis side Player is using the Festung Gross Paris. I believe this is the third or even fourth time we've seen the Festung in this tournament so far. And I believe the reason for that is, due to a lot of these games being played a few months ago, the meta was very different back then. And due to the DLC having been more recently released, a lot of people were thinking that the Festung was very strong. And this could also be before the nerf to the bombers and their price. So I'll have to check that as the game goes on if any of the bombers actually do come in. I can get up the information card and have a quick look. But either way, um, an interesting matchup against the 2nd Infantry. 2nd Infantry, a very versatile division, has a lot of diverse options in infantry, artillery, also has the M4s in phase A, which is a very big bonus to a lot of the allied divisions. Having that 10 armor and 11 AP really does a lot of damage early on, uh, especially with the 50 cal and 30 cal that they have. Um, so yeah, the M4DD is something I would expect Walther to be using in phase A, but of course we'll have to wait until the players put down the deployment. But let's talk a little bit about the players themselves. Of course, Walther um, has shown up in other tournaments and done well, definitely brought the fight to some of the top tier players in Steel Division. Player also has done so, uh, but maybe not seen as much. Uh, did defeat Yarl Comrade in phase, in round one, sorry, of this tournament. So. Definitely proved his worth to get here. Let's have a quick look at these deployments. So for the second infantry, going into the factory, it's gonna be some rifles, some ranger supports, the ranger leader, ranger marauders, and a ranger mortar there. For the top side, two units of ranger supports, ranger marauder and the Jeep 30 cal with recon. On the bottom side, it's gonna be a few units of rifles and a Jeep 30 cal with recon. Looks like Walther going to be putting more emphasis into the factory and this top side. It makes sense for the second infantry to focus the factory early on because they do have the ranger assaults that can be very dangerous at close range with those flamethrowers. Um, they also have ranger supports, which are ideal for the little bit longer range engagements, about like just over like the 100 meter range is, is ideal. And then they can open up with the 30 cals as well as their uh, M1 Garands. And they have like 10 HE on target with very high veterancy. So they are generally very accurate and do a lot of damage because of that. So that's something that uh, Walther can take advantage of in this sort of factory engagement. Uh, we'll have to see how much player sort of invest into, invests into that though, because he also has some very good infantry. Uh, both Lannerschutzen and Pivelong's very good at fighting an attritional war over this sort of cl close combat area of the map. And uh, something that uh, player can definitely play into, especially assisted by things like JU-188s throughout the game. As long as player's sort of AA network remains decent, uh, he should be able to sort of exploit the use of some of those JU-188s. Uh, but then again, the second infantry does have a decent air force as well. Um, can bring in the two star thunderbolts and shoot them down. So that's something again that player is going to need to take care of. Anyway, let's have a look at player's deployment. Panzerjäger on the top side with a Panzer One B is also going to be uh, probably a fifty millimeter mortar there. Uh, Bavarongs, two Landerschützen, and the Fell Gendarmery. Further down, we see the Landerschützen and the IG-18. Then there's going to be three Landerschützen heading into the factory with a Panard MG with the Aufkraller and also a Fell Gendarmerie. And on the bottom side, it's going to be a Pack 38, I believe, with a Landerschützen. Sometimes it's very difficult for me to remember all of the units from the Fest on Gross Palace uh, because they have so many different ones, like a lot of random units. Um, that aren't really in any other divisions. But either way, um, M4DD is going to be 
joining the push on the top side for Walther. So a lot of investment up here for Walther and he's going to be trying to possibly break through up here but will be bumping into players Panzieger. If the M4 ends up engaging at like 1000 meter range then it should always win against the Panzieger really. Um, but if the Panzieger gets close and the M4 is pinned or under pressure for whatever reason doesn't get the aim off then the Panzieri could potentially win because it has the veterancy and it can be made two star with the assistance of the Fel Gendarmerie for example so that's something that player could take advantage of. Anyway moving into the factory here it doesn't look like uh, player has committed too much he's deployed his lander shoots and shorts of the factory not gone for the main buildings here and I think that's very smart he knows he's probably up against the elite infantry of Walther early on and that's something that uh, he will want to not ignore but not necessarily dive into either. He wants to have an engagement where he can whittle down the numbers of the, the elite infantry so that in the mid to late game it's something he can exploit Walther having a lack of uh, because moving into phase B for example the Festung can gain access to um, the ROA and uh, those definitely do well at close range. This M4 however chewing up some lander shoots in there, 50mm mortars pinning some rifles. These lander shoots and did make a little salient on the bottom side which is providing a plus one for player at this moment in time. Panzer 1B engaging some ranger supports here and with their 13 HE they're certainly doing a lot of damage. That's three men already dead. JU-188 is coming in. Let's have a look. Ah, I wasn't quick enough looking at the cost of that. But either way, the bombing strike's still going to be very effective. Comes in and pins down the Ranger Leader, the Ranger Support, and the Ranger Marauders. M4DD is being forced to fall back. Panzieger getting itself into position. Feldgendarmery running after it as soon as possible to give it the extra veterancy. And player will be hoping for a kill here. Gets the bounce with the first shot. It's roughly 600 meters as it backs off. And the second shot does the job. Two-star veterancy. Nicely done. Uh, that was roughly 13 AP, I believe, versus the 10 front armor of that M4. But range supports have been dealt with. Ranger Marauder, can it open up and get the kill? It does not due to the high stress there. It missed the bazooka, and that is devastating. It's going to get pinned down by the Lander Schutzen as well. Can't get a second bazooka shot off, and the Panzerjäger finds a surrender. That is very, very significant on that top side. Players already broken through the majority of Walther's starting units. Like losing the M4 that early on is absolutely devastating. Meanwhile in the factory it doesn't look like too much has occurred. Uh, just as infantry engagement between these Lander Schutzen and the elite infantry of Walther. Um, these Lander Schutzen, one of the squads did die. The second one's taken a lot of damage but that's probably due to this flamethrower which has used up all of its ammunition as it falls back. Uh, the other Ranger Assault here is also going to be forced to fall back. Uh, with the Alphcladder joining the Lander Schutzen at close range, the IG is able to get shots directly onto the uh, squads on the edge of the factory. And that is so smart from player, bringing in the Alphcladder that close to the engagement and then keeping them on return fire so they don't reveal themselves. It's just really, really smart play. The Ranger Marauders, if they move forward, would probably spot the Alphcladder and then maybe Walther could deal with them. Uh, but unless that Alphcada unit gets spotted it's in a very nice position at the moment to sort of stop any units coming to the edge of the factory. On the bottom side player has tried to push forwards with some lander shoots in here but the rifles not allowing that to occur but with a Panzer 1B and an IG-18 joining the field we could see these units help out on the bottom side or maybe even help out push into the factory but Maybe not a better engagement. Looks like these Ranger Marauders, they are going to be in trouble. Lander shoots and do have 6 HE at that range, and it is going to be enough to kill off those Ranger Marauders. New M4 DDs on the field, on the top side. Player's going to be bringing in a second Panzer Jäger, though. This M4 is going to be very careful. Exploit its range, for sure. 1,000 meter range on the main gun, 800 meters on the 50 cal. So he's going to be wanting to stay at roughly that 800 meter range. Then he's only giving one AP over the 10 armor of his M4 that player can exploit. So player would have to get very lucky to win an engagement at that range. But Ranger Assault's there instantly surrendering a unit. Beverongs 
They are going to come under fire from the Ranger Assaults and Rifles at close range. This isn't too bad since the Ranger Assault isn't actually using its flamethrower. Because it's sort of too close, the flamethrower can't be used. The Verlongs are going to try and fall back, continuing to do more damage to the Ranger Assaults. And having already killed one and getting the other down to one man, that is actually really decent from player. The more damage he does to these elite infantry now, the less he has to do later on, and that does allow those ROA to do work. So Lanschus is still under fire. Poor chaps are just being sacrificed. IG-18, that's going to be continuing its way down though. Rifles jumping out of that building as they come under fire. Plus one for player. Can see he's ticked over 300 points, which isn't anything too significant. I think Wolf has done a relatively good job of holding the line so far, especially considering how much he lost on the top side of the map early on. I'm surprised it didn't swing into a plus two, but at the speed of the units that player is using didn't allow him to exploit and get up to this tree line, and that made a huge difference. LEFH-16 is now on the field. That's going to be trying to pin down some of this infantry before player forces an engagement again. But he is going to want to bring in some reinforcements. There is another Beverong squad on the way. But uh, accompanying that push into the factory with even more infantry than that would probably be ideal. Generally, you want to completely overwhelm your enemy when going for these sort of infantry engagements. Hans Jaeger, though, that's going to be engaging the Ranger Sports. The Ranger Sports are actually engaging at 100 meter range onto these Lander Shoots, and so they can't exploit their double 30 cal. And that is not very good from Walther, because now the Lander Shoots can actually have more HE. The M4 there did take a shot at the Panzerjäger. Does get hit by the Panzerjäger, but that was a bounce. Panzer 1B now exposed on its own since the Panzerjäger has backed off. I think it's important to keep the Panzerjäger alive for sure, so sacrificing the Panzer 1B in this case is not too bad, and honestly the M4 might even struggle to kill it, yeah, especially as it moves out of line of sight. Makes things very awkward. Walther has now tried to push on the bottom side back into where those Lander Schutzen were, uh, has suffered though in the face of this IG-18, and now a Panard MG looking to find the surrender. We'll be able to clean up that rifle on the bottom side, and possibly give player even more territory looking towards a plus two. So, so far the plays from player have been really clean. Um, I really liked the bombing strike onto the M4. Having that pinned and then taking advantage of it with the Panzerjägers was very nice indeed. Now he's kind of a little bit stuck with the second one. Walther you can see is backing off. Doesn't want to allow a close range engagement and that is smart from Walther. Panard though is going to eventually pin down these rifles. Ranger Marauders looking to intercept that armoured car though. Can they get the bazooka shot on target? They're just getting into range. Two star veteran C should be enough and job done. These also have nine accuracies so it's very rare that they miss. So seeing that sort of Ranger Marauder squad miss on the top side and not kill the Panzer 1B uh, was a real shame for Walther. But uh, with the stress that it was under, that can happen occasionally. We can see an SDK of Z10 coming in. That's going to be a pack 40 on the way to this top side of the map. There's going to be a flak 39, I would assume, coming in behind the factory. Yes, there is. IG-18 now fire positioning the location of the Marauders, hoping to take them out. If not, then the Lander shoots and can push forwards and do the job. Ranger Marauder score another kill there onto a Panzer 1B that tries to push more aggressively into the factory. These Beverongs coming under fire from the Ranger Assault are going to have to back off from that engagement. On this top side, oh, double Panzerjäger once again engaging the M4. Do actually manage to get the M4 to fall back, but this T30, it does have two star veterans, see? Can it find a shot onto the Panzerjäger here? The trouble is with the T30 is it's the velocity of its shells are actually pretty sh like slow, which 
which means I don't know why, but it's just generally relatively inaccurate. Like it's got four base accuracy, so this veteracy doesn't really help too much. Um, whereas if you look at the Panzerjägers, they've got five accuracy and two star veterancy, so they are significantly better. So there's the Ju 188. You can see there are 125 points that has since been uh, nerfed to make them cost more, but something that player is ex exploiting at this point um, in the tournament to. Uh, Gain some ground and to great effect already. Bombing that M4 was absolutely fantastic. And now he can look to bomb the next one and gain another advantage for his Panzerjägers. But with the addition of a second Sherman here, there is the potential for these Panzerjägers to be pinned up or to be uh, cleaned up quite nicely. But here we go, bombing strike once again. Oh, it completely missed the mark straight through the mid of both of those Shermans. Player's going to have to be careful with that engagement now, because if the M4s aren't pinned, then it definitely gives Walther a chance to get significant kills. And I'm surprised to not see him just fast move past his tree line here and have a go, because he didn't know that the Pack 40 was coming in, or maybe he he did. You can probably see that actually with a recon, so he knows it's there. Maybe that's the reason why he didn't just drive into that. Not that you would want to, anyway. Um, Panzer 1B does manage to pin down the range of support as they open up onto the Landeschutzen. Engagement in the uh, factory continues the same way it has been. Panzer 1B eventually getting track will destroyed. It's been lucky so far. One of the Panzerjägers has also gone down as the M4A1s come up. And that M4A1 has the potential to kill the second Panzerjäger, but the T30 is going to do the job. And a really nice break back here, potential for uh, Walther. If he sort of uses his M4A1 command here alongside his M4DD and the T30, he can keep the veterancy up of these three vehicles and do a lot of damage. But the Pack 40 may stop that in his tracks. Also, Armada 1 on the way, and that has the 1,200 meter range that the Shermans do not have. So, something that player can use to his advantage. And Bevelongs. Forced to fall back once again, but did manage to clean up the rifles there. LEFH-16 doesn't seem to be really helping out too much, if I'm honest. Uh, but is going to continue its fire into the factory here. 50mm mortar. That's going to be looking for a couple of hits onto these ranger supports. They are very low on men. Marda-1 coming forwards. Is going to be shooting at these ranger supports as well. 50mm mortar really wants to score those kills though. Now a, another M4DD coming in for the bottom side. Land shoots and reinforcing the factory may help out a little bit, but not too much. Oh, that's unfortunate. Losing that infantry on the top side there for Walther. Because he definitely needs infantry reinforcements at this point with his ranger sports getting so low on men. Driver wounded for the M4DD is going to allow a second shot or even a third shot from the Pack 40, and the Pack 40 gets the job done. Lovely kill there for player using in this Pack 40 to great effect. I feel like if Walther knew that was there though, that shouldn't have happened, but uh, it has. And uh, now the Pack 38 going to be opening up onto the M4DD on the bottom side. It is going to aim and fire a lot quicker than the M4, so that M4 will potentially be pinned and when it is we'll have to fall back and if that happens then the Panzer 1B has a potential to just fast move towards it and surrender it. Oh on this top side M4A1 in trouble does get uh, crew wound and driver wound but the Armada 1 and Pack 40 were forced back 60mm mortar came in just in time yeah the Pack 30 winning that engagement here goes the Panzer 1B you can see him put it on the fast move only rifles coming up, so nothing really there to stop him. And if he can find this in, this uh, surrender, then it's going to open up even more ground on this side. The Panzer 1B might even end up killing these rifles before they unload. Not going to. But the Panzer 1B is going to continue regardless. Now see the lightning come in. Bit of a panic there. Panzer 1B, it actually stopped, so didn't get the surrender, and the rifles have recovered. So this may not work out, the M4 is going to be able to aim at close range, gets a shooter wound, <laughs> it's actually going to work out the other way with the Panzer 1B uh, surrendering. 
So pack 40 has been forced back by the 60mm mortar, but a mortar can't force back a 3 star Stug, and that's definitely something that the Festong can make great use of. Coming around the corner here into the face of the M4A1, the M4A1 will get the first shot off, but misses. Does a 2 3 star Stug miss very often? No, it does not. Gets the job done. Very, very nice indeed. Now the Stug even firing at the 60mm mortar. And with that taken out, well, the Pack 40 on the top side might get the shot onto the T30. I believe the M4 on the bottom side must have also died or something in order to cause Walther to surrender. But after 15 minutes and 14 seconds, uh, Walther is defeated by player. Player picking up 870 kills to 475 losses, 2 to 1 KD, roughly. Very nice indeed. Um, in terms of these kills, I think the comeback had potential there on that top side, but with the M4A1 and the M4DD both being cleaned up, it left a huge hole there, and the T30 was also under threat from that Pack 40, and there was potential that would have gone down as well. So, Walther definitely getting overwhelmed, and moving towards Phase C, it just gets harder, right, because the Panthers come in, so it sort of warrants a surrender in this case, I believe. Uh, losses, let's have a look. Stug took out their M4A1. Pack 40 killed the M4DD. But no, the M4DD on the bottom side must have still been live. Um, however, maybe the JE188 was going to come in and bomb it because we did hear it towards the end there. But an interesting game, seeing the Festung once again. Once upon a time when the Festung was actually very strong. And their bombers cost 125 points. How ridiculous was that? But used to great effect here by player. And a fantastic job getting through that M4 on the top side. I think you could probably say that he could have done that now. Potentially in the game. Because the JU-188 would only cost, I think, 25 points more. I think they're 150 points now. Um... But maybe that would have meant that player had to wait another minute and therefore Walther could have reacted sooner. Who knows? Anyway, um, it is what it is. Player takes the first game in the best of three. Uh, congratulations to him. Now we'll be moving on to the second game to see if Walther can bring a game back. But until then, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>